Welcome to Studio 5. We've got lots to share this week as we inch closer to Mother's Day. The NFL star Kelvin Beecham is proving to be a blessing to mothers in Zambia. Raymond Arroyo has a history series for children that celebrates the power of mothers. C.C. Wyman's mother, grandmother, and pastor is here with a message for generations and even my grandmother is making an appearance this week. We want to begin with Arizona Cardinal offensive tackle Kelvin Beecham. You've likely heard the story of him helping to renovate his mother's own home some years ago. This week, we are looking at him working off the field, helping to deliver clean water wells in areas of desperate need in Zambia. Thanks to guidance from World Vision. I sat down with World Vision, the, the biggest conversation and the biggest, I guess, point that I kept driving home was I want to go where the greatest need is. And Zambia just happened to be um, where the need happened to be the greatest. My name is Kelvin Beecham, World Vision Celebrity Ambassador, 12-year NFL vet. Why clean water wells um, is because, for one, water is freedom. You can't get to some of the other issues that are surrounding some of the families and some of the challenges without actually talking about access to water. We talk about the symptoms quite a bit. We talk about diseases. We talk about um, diarrhea. We talk about malnutrition. All those things stem from clean water. Seeing Susan trying to pick up the jug of water and then putting that jug of water on my head, that was the experience that, for one, I'll probably never forget. To realize that's how somebody has to go and, 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 and fetch water, um, that experience is, is, is seared into my mind, but it's not only seared into my mind, it's seared into my soul. She has no water, she walks three times a day, the jug is, you know, water, so that's a, that's a weight that's moving around consistently on top of your head. She has a baby on her back, and she's doing that three times a day. And then, considering that there's flies, there's dead cows that have fell into that water, like, to realize some of the issues are snakes in that water, to realize some of the issues that are going on with that, that bucket at that time, you realize that the impact that you're making is literally giving freedom and liberating someone who had no liberation. It's giving somebody and granting somebody the opportunity to have access to life through water. A very basic human need. <laughs> after being here and after seeing it, you're realizing that, that God didn't send you here, he didn't send us here, um, you know, just to, to see the work, but actually do something about what we're seeing. Um, you know, one of the things I was praying yesterday was just, Lord, let me be where my feet are. Wherever my feet are, at that particular moment, wherever we happen to be, um, whatever time of day it is, just help me to be present and, and see what you want me to see, feel what you want me to be, what you want me to feel, be convicted where you want me to be convicted, be inspired where you want me to be inspired, but wherever I'm at at that moment, just be where my feet are. The fundraising amount was $15,000. Um, that was the price of, of, of a well uh, that serves about 28, no, no, serves about 300 people, uh, 2,800 uh, gallons of water. So to be able to raise that money, to be able to get here to Zambia, to be able to know that we hit that marker was, uh, was incredible. It was amazing just to feel the, the ownership, the energy, the smiles. Um, and I think this is a different type of smile than just hey, I'm happy, but just overjoyed with the ability to have access to water. Um, for me, that was, that, that was, that was, it took you to, it took a, it was a different type of high. You know, I think meeting people where they are is, is, is what Jesus did in many different respects. So I think, you know, in that respect, it's meeting people exactly where they're at. And then being able to, to, to evangelize in a very organic way. I've been blessed to, to come from what I thought was poverty 
uh, in Mahia, Texas, and then you see and experience things on a on a global scale, and you realize how good you had it. So for me, it's bigger than just it's bigger than football. It's bigger than just living a very simple life. But it's being able to to to, to expose myself to what the world has to offer, and how some folks on this planet are, are really dealing with significant challenges. I don't think you can live a faith-filled life or Christ-filled life or gospel-filled life and see issues that are going on across our planet and sit silent. As you heard, Kelvin Beecham serves as an ambassador for World Vision. I've also had the opportunity to travel with the organization and it does indeed do some great work. Still to come. We're picking up a book in this Mother's Day edition of Studio 5. What I'm really trying to do is inspire kids and parents to recognize the turnabout tales in our own lives. From a best-selling author who reveals how a mother's love sparked a light in the man who created the light bulb. And then... Grandma B, it's Major, the soul singer, but the guy that is absolutely in awe that God proved that he will never leave nor forsake. A major voice in music helps me pay tribute to a major force in my life, my hero and soon to be 105 year old grandmother. And she's sharing a major love story with us right here in Studio 5. Welcome back to Studio 5. In keeping with our celebration of moms this week, we turn now to New York Times bestselling author and journalist Raymond Arroyo. He's sharing the first book in his new series called Turnabout Tales. It's the story of one of America's most famous inventors, Thomas Edison. It's the real life tale of how a small spark can create a very big light. When no one thought much of young Edison, his mother saw imagination and curiosity, and she thought he could do anything. The first book in the series is called The Unexpected Life of Thomas Alva Edison. The series is called Turnabout Tales. What inspired the series before we get to the first in it? I find with kids, they can't focus on a womb to tomb biography. So I thought, how do I frame this? How do you, how do you focus it? And what a turnabout tale is, it's that moment of crisis in a young person's life. It's that obstacle where they think all is lost when it turns out that's the portal to their entire life, what they're called to. And that's what happens in each of these turnabout tales. The first being Thomas Edison, the unexpected light of Thomas Edison. I like that, the unexpected light. So what's Thomas Edison's turnabout, if you will? <laughs> in second grade, Edison is registered in a school and the master, the schoolmaster says, He's addle-brained and cannot be taught. He's thrown out of school. He runs home in tears to his mother. His mother drags him back to school and says, my boy has more intelligence and curiosity than even you, and I'll take him home and homeschool him myself. He was homeschooled by his mother. She accompanied him, fed his passions, gave him books to read from literature to scientific and electric manuals. But most importantly, she allowed him to experiment and tinker, to play with acids and uh, electricity and uh, build telegraph lines around the house. He blew up the basement, he burned down the barn, but that's part of exploration and growing. And he, all of the things he learned from his mother, in his own words, and the reason I came to this was, there's a line he said in old age, my mother was the making of me. And if it had not been for her, I should never have become an inventor. What particularly inspired you? Was there a connection between the two of you that you felt? When I saw that line about his mother, that his mother was the making of him, I, I wanted to explore that more. And I thought, you know, this is a great reminder for all of us. And this is what history does. It furnishes us not only with great stories, but lessons that we can take into living. And this is about parents and mentors accompanying a child in their passion and not allowing others to define who they are or who they're meant to be. And I thought that story was worth telling. Tell me about his mom. I mean, I imagine there's more you found in research. I mean, she seems to have been a really special person and an encouragement to other mothers today. A, a mother of nine, a, a woman who, you know, lived in multiple places, uh, you know, a trailblazer in many ways, 
but she was an educator. She was a teacher in Canada. So mm -hmm. education was not foreign to her. And she used all of that training and poured it into her son, the only one who was in the house at the time. But certainly, she, he talks about the training, the intellectual training his mother gave him, how to read a book deeply and quickly, and, uh, and how to incorporate different types of writing, both literature as well as scientific journals and philosophy and politics. He read it all. He was presented it all from nine years old and onward. Your hope for this series is that children and parents will be reading this? Well, my whole hope for every time I write for kids, I hope parents and mentors and teachers read with kids because the synapses of a child's mind begin to fire and grow in the reading. When you hear an adult, or and particularly someone who cares for you, read to you and you read to them. And there's the exchange of not only information and wisdom, but values, sensibilities that you get around a book that you otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity for. So my hope is every turnabout tale reminds a child that obstacles are just turns for you. They're moments of inflection when your life begins, not when it ends. I mean, we are still warmed by the creations, the innovations of Thomas Edison, from the light bulb to the, the alkaline battery to the electric grid. All of these things were created almost a century ago, if not a century ago, by a child who was written off as uh, unable to do very much of anything. And look what he did. Sounds almost biblical. <laughs> yeah, it is biblical. Uh, God, God hath chosen the weak to confound the strong, you know, and the foolish to confound the wise. I've inverted the line, but that's it. And when you see a life like Edison, it reminds us of that. Don't write people off. And it's sometimes important for parents to see that light in a child, even when no one else does, because they might be the next Edison. And who are we to deprive the world of that? The Unexpected Light of Thomas Alva Edison is available right now wherever books are available. That brings us to a very special moment in this week's show. This week's snapshot is just a little bigger. It's a personal tribute to my hero as we approach this Mother's Day weekend. My grandmother, Beatrice B. Fields Graham, as we count down to celebrating, get this, her 105th birthday. Beatrice B. Fields Graham, Grandma, in case you didn't know, you're my hero, and I celebrate you, Mother's Day, today, and every day, especially as we, your children and grandchildren, <laughs> count down the days until August 29th, when we unite to celebrate you turning 105 years young. I find comfort in your bright smile, your kind heart, and your honest words. There is no me without you, and you're a living example of love, love of self, love of family, and most importantly, love of your heavenly Father. You gave me your Jesus when I was just a child, and as an adult, you still show me how he is my Jesus today, in life, and in the words of your favorite hymn, that's become my favorite hymn, too. Mike, I could, I could sing it. I think you could sing it. It charged to keep a hand, a God to glorify. Wow. It charged my God to keep a hand. Oh, Lord. Wow. I know it's one thing. I got to keep. Okay. I All got right. to keep. I don't care what not my shrine do. I got to keep the joy. Okay. Because right. he's been good to me. And it is good to look back at more than 100 years, all the way back to you marrying the love of your life, my grandfather, Henry Graham, and a love story you vividly remember and shared in a visit with your youngest daughter, my Aunt Joyce. I remember when I got baptized, 
Okay, all right, okay. Uh, I'm baptized at 13 years old. Okay, all right, okay. Anything else? And and the, 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 the husband I married, mm -hmm. he was down at the river uh -huh. with a handkerchief tied around his head. And, and when they baptized me and bring me up out the water, he said, that's my wife. And that's the way we got together. I never went out on a date or nothing. He said, that's my wife. And next he came with my parents and he asked permission to keep company with me. Uh -huh. And that's all I know about my, I don't know nothing about Get out there and party on nothing. Okay. That's the way we got married. A more than 50 year marriage that gave birth to seven daughters and one son. Five of these surviving great women, my mom included, joined me for this sweet journey to say, we love you. And to snap a few photographs to share with each other ahead of that big 105th birthday celebration. I've said it before and I'll say it again. After all these years, you are still the greatest part of me. So I've asked one of today's greatest singers to help me show you this is why I love you. Grandma B, it's Major, the soul singer, but the guy that is absolutely in awe that God proved that he will never leave nor forsake his own. 105 years old. You deserve everything you want. Tell me what you want. We got you. But in this moment, I'll say, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, sweet Grandma B. Happy birthday. Happy New Year. Yeah, baby. Happy birthday, beautiful. This is why we love you. Just moments away. Wife, mother, grandmother, pastor, and the most awarded female gospel artist of all time. CC Winans pays a Mother's Day visit to Studio 5 with a message for generations. Welcome back to Studio 5, Mother's Day edition. Our next guest is one of the most awarded female gospel artists of all time. She's a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a pastor, and her mission these days is making sure faith is passed down from generation to generation. I've got joy, cause I've got Jesus. Of course, I don't know your life, but just from observation, reading your book, I see you and your husband plan to retire, but I kind of feel like you're busier now than you've ever been. <laughs> Am I correct? <laughs> You are so correct. <laughs> Mom, somebody asked me about my retirement plan. I said, it is not working out the way I thought it was going to work out. Keep all of my birds. Yeah, my dad has been paid. Praise the Lord. God is good. <laughs> I will say that said, it was beautiful to watch the last music video where we're seeing generations of your family. How emotional was that for you? It was incredible to, to show the faithfulness of God through family. And I believe it just touched a lot of families around the world. I think we forget with all the stuff that is going on and the pain and the suffering that, you know, a lot of us have experienced um, in life periods, but also definitely through these last few years. Uh, it was a great reminder that through it all, God has been faithful. You know, I still have an incredible husband after 38 years, 38 years of marriage, and 
and and my daughter and her husband are doing well and you know got a grandbaby and now my son is getting married and i'm like thank you jesus i'm gonna get the club Now a book. I'm, I'm excited about the book. I just pray that people will respond to the charge of pouring into the next generation, understanding that whoever you are, as a believer, you have something to offer your testimony, wisdom to whoever's coming after you. You know, I'm here today because of those mothers who took out time to tell me, no, nah, baby, sit down. That's just too short. <laughs> And I'm so grateful for that. And and now I have to understand that that's who I am today. I'm I'm the mother of the church now. I, I was like, when did that happen? <laughs> but it happened. And and we have to understand that so that we can pass the baton well. I'm grateful for every award. I'm grateful for everything that has happened throughout our career but I always tell people that I, I never believed that God wanted me to save the world and lose my family mm, you know yeah and yes. and so when all of that is over to have a family that loves God and loves one another to me is is what life is all about God, we And here's some more good news in the work of CC Wine, and she's partnering with Belmont University as an artist in residence in the fall. And that comes with a performance at Belmont's Fisher Performing Arts Center. That'll happen in September. Hey there, welcome back to Studio 5. As you know, music fuels this production every single week, and this week is no exception. Take a listen, and you'll hear why Charity Gale's I Speak Jesus is what's playing in my ear this week. Well, on that musical note, we are just about out of time for this edition of Studio 5. So let's pause for the cause for at least a moment and take a look at next week's rundown. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. The man who penned the lyrics to this week's Studio 5 soundtrack is Jesse Reeves, and he has quite a story to share. I was playing for a guy named Chris Tomlin for 17 years, and... Um, Basically, the short version of the story is, is my wife came to me in 2017 and she said, Jesus told me something this morning and you're not going to like it. And I was like, oh, okay. You'll have to join us next week to learn what happens next and what's happening now. Please be sure to join us for that story and so much more next week. Before we say goodbye this week, we've got time for just one more thing, and we're giving that to the NFL's Kelvin Beecham. Here's your final word. Being about it is coming here, realizing the issue, seeing the issue, feeling the issue, smelling the issue, touching the issue, and realizing I got to do something about this right now. And for me, that's, that's, that's what I talk about. When I'm talking about talking about it and being about it, I can talk about it all day on any sports or, or, or talk show, but being about it is coming and putting my feet on the ground and being where my feet are, listening, learning, asking questions, and hearing what individuals have to say about the challenges that they have on an everyday basis. Kelvin, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Mother's Day. Bye-bye.